Well, hi Airmen, welcome back to Motion RC. We're setting up the thrust vectoring on this Sukhoi by Freewing. One thing you want to remember about thrust vectoring is usually it has three servos, like in this case. You have one servo on the right side that goes up and down, and then you have a servo on the left side that goes up and down. And then you have a servo that works both nozzles as a rudder. I am using a DX8. I'm also using a 8-channel receiver spectrum. The auxiliary one port is flap, but since we don't have a flap, the auxiliary from one of the thrust vectors will go into it, as well as a thrust vectoring going into port number two auxiliary and port number three auxiliary. Now I've randomly hooked up the thrust vectoring into the three ports, and I'm not sure exactly which is what. And it doesn't really matter because we'll just program it according to the way it's set up. So the first thing I'm going to do is start moving my auxiliary switches. And so I'm going to start with that flap, which is auxiliary one. And as I flip this, we can see that that engages on the starboard side. Now this is a three position switch. And if you notice, if I flip the switch up, the nozzle goes down. And if I flip it all the way down, the nozzle goes up. It is reversed, but we're not going to worry about that at this time. Just be mindful that there is a neutral position which is going to be number one on the three position switch. So we're going to move that to number one so we can level that off. Now I'm going to go to auxiliary number two. And as I move that switch, we can see that the port side is engaging. And if I'm all the way down at number two position on the switch, it is up. If I flip all the way up, it is down. But if I flip it to the first position, we are in a neutral and it's nice and level. And this is where you want to be for programming. And I'm going to roll this roll dial and you can see the thrust vectors engaging as a rudder. And that is on auxiliary three. So now, we have to assign each individual thrust vectoring with a surface. And it is quite easy to do. It's just a little time consuming, that's all. So we're gonna go into the function list and we're gonna scroll down to mixing. We're gonna highlight this aileron rudder and we're just gonna roll that until we hit mix one and then push enter. And we have an inhibit right here. And we want to move that to rudder. And I'm going to work on the rudder first because that should be only one servo to work with. So it's only going to get one mix. So we know that that was auxiliary three. So we're going to highlight that now. Now, nothing's going to happen when we go to hit our rudder. And that's because we haven't set a rate. And the rate is how much of that servo is going to move. And if you notice, there's two rates. That means we're only going to work one half. And then we're going to work the other opposite side of the servo itself. So here's what I mean by that. First of all, I'm going to highlight this. And I'm going to move it, oh, let's say around the 50 area, it doesn't matter. I just want to make sure that the thrust vectoring is working in the proper way. So I'm going to engage my rudder. And you can see that my rudder is going left, but the thrust vectorings are going to the right. And that is not the way we want it. So that just tells me, no problem, let's just go opposite on this number. And we're going to go negative 100. And that's 100% of the movement of the servo. And that's only on the one way, from neutral to whichever way it's engaging, which is to the left side. So if I engage to the right, nothing happens. 
no big deal because all we have to do is now negative this by 100 and we're going to get our full deflection of the servo from left to right check that out and there we are so that one's done now let's go into mix number two so now we're going to mix the elevators so I want to move this to elevator and we're going to, we remember we had that um, auxiliary one on the right side so we're going to bring up the auxiliary one I'm going to just positive this maybe 50 or so percent and when I engage the elevator on the downside on the downside it's actually going on the right way so I can continue now moving this to the 100 percent and we'll finish it out on this side to the 100 percent also so when I engage this elevator the right side is now engaged so let's go to mix number three and we'll finish off the elevator by bringing up auxiliary number two and mixing it and I'm going to go positive just a little bit or so and I'm going to that okay they're both in the right direction so no problem let's get back in there and we're going to move these to the positive 100 so now on mix number four and we're going to set up the ailerons on this other one we're going to go to auxiliary one which will be the right side I'm just going to engage a little bit of movement to make sure we are on the right track so when I work my aileron it's got a slight down to it and that is going in the right direction because when I deflect it is going with that right aileron so let's finish that up Whoop, back up there with the 100 and we'll also change the second rate to 100 and now we have that correct so let's go up to mix number five now And we're going to finish off with the other side of the aileron. Now this one's going to be auxiliary two. Let's get some movement on that so we can see it. All right, we got a problem there because when I engage to the left, that nozzle's going down, but my left aileron is going up. So that just tells me I have to reverse that. So instead of going positive 100, I'm going to take this down to negative 100. And we'll do the same for the second rate. Now when I engage those ailerons, <laughs> look at that all right so our mixing is almost complete and I say almost complete now if you remember anytime that we flipped one of these switches our surface kind of goes haywire so we're going to fix that at this time we are going to go down to the system setup it's temporarily going to disable our signal to the aircraft. That's okay. 
We're going to come down to switch select. And here's the culprits right here. You see this auxiliary one on flap? We need to inhibit that. Inhibit number two. And inhibit number three. Go back to our main screen. Now, anytime that I engage a switch, our services are completely off. I can also roll the dial and nothing's there. Now, when I move the surfaces though, we have complete thrust vectoring. Now we're on track. Now, the manual for this particular aircraft says never fly thrust vectoring on your maiden flight. Fly it first, trim it out, and then work out the thrust vectoring. So that means we have to turn on and off our thrust vectoring. I'm going to use my dual rate on my elevator as my on and off switch. I never use dual rates separate like rudder on the rudder, aileron on aileron. I just move all of mine just to all the DR Expo to one switch. Um, I'll just assign them here so when I flip these I get my dual rates. I only have to flip one switch for all three surfaces. So this one's going to be empty. Now we have a lot of different switches so wherever you assign it that is entirely up to you. But I'm going to put mine on this switch. To do that I have to go back into mixing. I'm going to go to the first mix. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. You see where that switch says on? Well, if I just bring up that switch, which is elevator DR, and activate that, and do that for mix number two, do that for mix number three, Go to mix number four. And mix number five. If I can get back to the, get back into the uh, main screen. Now all I have to do is engage this elevator switch from zero to one and now I have my thrust vectoring on two thrust vectorings automatically on but if I bring that to the zero position I have no thrust vectoring and so this is how I can turn it on and off in mid-flight. If you go to set up your dual rates, since you have mixes on your main surfaces, anytime that you adjust a main surface, that dual rate will also apply to whatever it's mixed with. Now, if you ever find that that mix just isn't working out for you, maybe you need more thrust vectoring or less thrust vectoring, that's no problem because all you have to do is go back to your mixing And you'll change these rates right here. Then you can dial that plane to the way you like it. So with that, that's all there is to it. I'm Captain Mike at Motion RC. We will see you out at the field. Stay tuned for some more awesome videos. See ya.